Hey guys! <laughs> this video, as you saw by the title of the video, it's all about my experience studying at Goldsmiths. And yeah, if you guys haven't seen, I have done a video about my university experience in London before um, with Guillermo. But a lot of you guys have a lot of specific questions about Goldsmiths and my course in general, so I decided to make a more specific video. But just in case you're curious and you haven't watched my other video, I'm gonna leave it maybe here, I think it is. So yeah, okay, so after I posted my original video, a lot of you guys met, um, DM'd me on Instagram because you had a lot of questions about Goldsmiths and my degree and the area and everything. Also, if you DM me on Instagram and I don't reply, I'm really sorry, like I actually read your DMs, but I don't know why, I don't know why Instagram doesn't let me like reply back sometimes unless I follow you, it's really strange. But if you guys want to talk to me and like have a specific question and you have asked me on Instagram and like I don't reply, ask me on any in, on this channel or my other channel, I always reply to my YouTube comments so it's probably easy to talk to me by um, YouTube than Instagram if you have any more questions. So yeah, a lot of you guys have um, asked me questions because you're either going to start there in October or because you're thinking of applying there in the future or just, you're just curious in general, so I'm just gonna answer a bit of those questions. Now, right now, it's 3rd of September. If you are starting uni in October, I think uni starts in October. Good luck, I wish you all the best. First, let me introduce like my experience, just in case you guys haven't seen the other video. I studied media and communications bachelor's degrees. It's a bachelor of arts at Goldsmith University from 2017 to 2020. In case you're randomly watching this video and you don't know, I'm from Spain. I, stud I lived all my life in Spain before moving to uni, but I studied in a British school in Spain. So a lot of you guys, especially the Spanish ones, asked me like, how did you manage to like study in the UK? Did you do like a like an exchange program? Were you there for your whole degree? How could you apply? So basically for me, the process was like just the same process as a British person would have. I just applied via UCAS and because I did my A-levels, I didn't really need to do any like English exams or anything because I did A-levels just like, and GCSEs just like British people. So I'm sorry, I can't really explain more if you're international and have more questions i just applied as a normal like british citizen would back then there was no brexit in 2017 so for me there was no problem applying and moving there when i moved there i didn't need to do any paperwork i didn't need to request any visas or anything so i just moved there um now i think you need a visa or a settled pre-settled status if you're from the eu I'm not sure if they charge you the same because for me they charge me the same amount as a British person. For me it was £9,250 per school year and there's like three school years, I think, I'm not too sure. I got, I managed to get a loan from the British government to pay for my studies. Just before applying, just like you probably are if you're watching this video, I was so nervous. When I got accepted, I kept searching videos about the uni. I really didn't know it was my first time moving away from home, my first time living by myself, and especially because, you know, it was a whole different country. I was really scared, so... Yeah, it's, it's completely normal to feel scared, so... You guys, I'm fine. It's four years later, and I'm fine. I'm still living in London. So I'm gonna divide the video into some sections. In the description, I'm gonna like time mark them and you can skip through the sections you're interested in if you don't wanna watch the whole video. Some of you guys have asked me like, what's the reputation of the uni like? Like, why did you apply there? Something like that. So back then in 2017, well, 2016, when I was applying for universities, I just really didn't know where I wanted to go because you know I'm, I'm not from the UK I didn't really know that much so I just applied to a bunch of unis actually Goldsmiths was kind of like an extra option I didn't even consider going there and then I got accepted into all my unis and I went to 
the open day at Goldsmith so they do like a little open day and everything and you know what I really love the vibe there I feel like so inspired and I feel like this is such like this is such an amazing place to study like my life is gonna be amazing here because they do like a little little like sample class like what the classes are going to be like which was a lie because what we were talking about in that class didn't really come up in my course at all which was really sad because it was really interesting so they kind of like with that so no shade if you go to an open day and it's amazing it's probably not gonna be that amazing they, it's an open day for a reason but anyway but then for media and communications which is the degree i studied goldsmith was like the top one of the top top three ranked in the uk so i that's how i that and the open day like that combined just really made me like just really made me decide to study there to be honest i'm so happy if i had to study another bachelor's degree like in the if i can could turn back time like yes go to Ultimis. i really enjoy it like the actual like the vibe of the units it's um i wouldn't say it's like a small uni but you know compared to like king's or something else or some other bigger uni there's like campus all around London, for example, for Kings. In Goldsmiths, it's just like, campus is just in one location. There are like many different buildings, but it's only in one location. I don't know, it feels like quite cozy, like family vibe, familiar vibe, you know? And yeah, to be honest, I, that aspect of it, I really like it, even though it's a bit of a smaller uni. A lot of people in the industry know Goldsmiths. I, I applied there, I got accepted, and I was ready to move. And then it was time to like decide my accommodation and everything. I I had heard when I was like planning on moving there that New Cross, the area, was like really shady, quite dangerous. So I was like, to be honest, that really scared me. And a few of you guys have asked me like, how dangerous is New Cross? Is it really shady? I've heard like a lot of stuff goes down in there. And like, to be honest, you guys, I just moved out of New Cross like a month ago. I had be, I've been living in New Cross and Lewisham for like my three out of four years in the UK. I too was scared like, oh, New Cross is shady, blah, blah, blah. And don't get me wrong, like it's not the safest place in London, you know. But personally, it's with me, of course, you if you're a girl, like uh, it's so sad, but you need to be careful at night, something like that when you're walking by yourself. But I feel like you need, you have to be careful regardless of where you are anyway you always need to like be careful especially in a big city like london to me personally i've never really experienced like a violent situation like affecting myself or i've never really felt like oh wow new Cross is really dangerous i've never felt that also you need to keep in mind like of course like it may have been that area might have been dangerous in the past but like right now because of the university and everything it's really kind of popping that area like i kind of miss it now that i've moved out there are like so many like nice cafes little restaurants i don't know i just feel like the vibe in new cross i personally really like it it's not like central london vibe it's not that far away from london it's like a five minute train to new um to london bridge from new cross station but for me Again, I live right next to the station, like I live two minutes away from the station, like five minute walk from uni. So for me, I was not really in a dangerous area. But honestly, if you're like thinking of applying to Goldsmith and you're like iffy about it just because you think it's a dangerous area, it's not at all. I really love the vibe. There's there's so many students like walking on, even, even now with the pandemic, there are not that many, but Usually there are so many students walking everywhere on the street. It's like kind of buzzing. It's really inspiring all the art people. Cause if you don't know, Goldsmiths is kind of like an arts university, which I didn't know before I applied. But I, fo I found out after I arrived, there's like a really big art, art department and everyone really inspires you. So I really like the area. If you're not, if you're like worried about that, I wouldn't worry about that at all. When I applied, I applied for the university accommodations, which is usually the cheapest option. And I got into Loring Hall. Now, if you've seen, if you've seen my other video, you know that I only lasted like two days in Loring Hall. Just because, okay, hear me out. There are many different, um, accommodations in uni like provided by the actual uni 
I chose Loring Hall, which I think is like the cheapest and like the biggest one. And if you're like me, my personality type is INF. I'll put it here. I never, I never remember. Like you know, I want to say I'm like an extroverted introvert, if that makes sense. Like. It's not that I don't like going out or anything like that, but I really need like my my space, like my home, you know, to like go like in the end of the day, at the end of a long day, I just want to be alone in my house, you know, like Loring Hall is not really like that. It's kind of known as the party university, the party accommodation. Crazy shit goes down there, like drugs, everything, you know. And like, that's not to say the flat you end up in, it's gonna be like crazy madness. Like the flat I ended up in, like my flatmates, even though I only knew them for like a week or two, I don't think they, they weren't like crazy or mad or doing drugs, which if you are, that, that's no, I'm not judging you, it's just not me. But for me, after spending my first night there, it just really wasn't my vibe. And you just know, like you just know, like you just feel like this is not home, this is not gonna be my home, I just don't feel safe there. It was like, it was really chaotic. So if you're looking for that kind of university experience, like party all night, every night, drugs, alcohol, everything, apply for there, if that's what you're looking for. For me, I was looking a bit more toned down. That's not, you know, you can always go out every night, it doesn't have to be in like that kind of accommodation. So I kind of dropped out of my accommodation on the first, the first week. And I was like, you know, I was really stressed looking for a new one. I ended up living in Chapter Lewisham, which is a private accommodation. It's recommended by the school, but it's not actually like a Goldsmiths accommodation. It's like um, an accommodation in Lewisham. It's like a 10 minutes bus, bus ride from the uni. And there are other people from different unis too so it's not only a goldsmith one. it is significantly pricier compared to the like university accommodations but i knew someone living there and i had visited it before i applied so i was like okay this seems more like my vibe it's a bit more calm to be honest chapter lewisham is really nice to be honest like uh there's a study area there's a gym area a social area like a little garden it's quite nice there's like a big ass down in front of it if you can afford it, go for it. For example, there's like a social area, people went there every night, you know. You can still have like that kind of party life if you're if that's what you want in that accommodation. I just felt a bit safer than in Loring Hall. So that's why I applied, you know, the accommodation is quite modern and nice. So that's why I applied and I really recommend going to like a host, like a, a student accommodation on your first year because that's how you get to know people, like that's the real university experience Investigate a bit more into the kind of hole you want I know... I don't know what it's called I know the other holes, like the other university holes are definitely calmer I can't remember the name of it, but they're also like right next to uni I just personally, if you're kind of like me, I wouldn't recommend Loring Hall, maybe the other ones But you know, just do your research The thing with living in Chapter Lewisham is the cost of it is, um, I think it was like a hundred pounds more expensive per week than Loring Hall. It was like quite a big difference, you know. My parents really weren't expecting to pay that much because, you know, my parents were the ones that paid for my rent whilst I was in uni. So, you know, because I was living in that place, the amount of money I had in my first year, I feel like it wasn't really enough to live your best life if that makes sense so you guys know london is expensive you've all like one of the questions i have here is like the living cost living cost of being a student in london okay so for me my parents paid for my accommodation and my like travel like my oyster card and stuff because i if you're a, if you're a, a uni just get like a uni oyster card and just get like a monthly travel card something like that because then you can like explore all of london and like it's the the best the best choice economically and then apart from that my parents gave me 50 pounds per week it's not enough if you live in london london is quite expensive like eating out even if you go like wasabi or like a fast food place it's kind it's gonna be like 10 pounds minimum you know drinks are expensive in london like pints pint of beer could be like five pounds 
So be prepared to have to say no to going out it's not the same like going out somewhere else in the uk and going out in london don't expect like having i mean if you're kind of well off and you're kind of rich then yes you can have like dinner in like nice restaurants every week every night every day but for me that was not the case so i had to say no to a lot of plans just because i didn't have that kind of money that's why i really recommend like joining clubs in school i was in the tennis club on my first year and like stuff like that because it's easy to romanticize the london life like oh i'm gonna like be shopping here be eating there like coffee every day here like it's not really like that if you're a student like most students are kind of broke and if you don't get a maintenance loan like i said in the beginning i didn't really get one there's definitely like limits to that so i really recommend getting like a second job to be honest it's really easy to get like a waitressing job in london there are so many opportunities that's what i did i was a waitress like all of my uni career so that's really nice to meet new people because obviously it's nice to have your uni friends but it's also nice to have friends outside of uni so i really recommend that getting like another side job or like a part-time job full-time job i was full-time in the summer part-time during school usually they're quite flexible flexible with students you can have your extra money you are working so that means you don't really spend that much because you are working and also you get to meet a lot of new people i met so many amazing people whilst i was like waitressing and like i met my boyfriend and everything so i really recommend doing that okay let's talk more about the course so media and communications where do i start to be honest i applied to meet I wanted to study media and communications because so I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I knew like it was, I knew I wanted to study in that kind of field. Like you know, media communications could be so many different things like film, television, photography, journalism, uh, marketing, uh, just so many different like careers, career paths you can get from that. So that's kind of what I wanted like i was like oh i want to be a journalist i want to be a writer i want to be like a radio host even though i'm really i'm a really bad talker like i am not good at talking which is very ironic considering i'm filming this video but i was like oh i want to do this i want to do that and then once i started studying i realized what i was interested in was to marketing which is what i'm pursuing now so if you're like me if you're not too sure what you want to be in the future but you are sure you want to be like in a creative field media field then yes i recommend studying that on the other hand if you're quite sure you want to do like oh i want to do like tv production or i want to uh, be a journalist i want to do this i want to be creative photography creative marketing something like if you're really sure about what you career you want to pursue i don't really recommend studying media and communications because it's so broad it's really hard to like specialize in something within the degree so for me, after my second year, I kind of want, I kind of knew what I wanted to do. But the thing is, obviously, spe especially on the first and second year, there are like uh, mandatory classes that you need to take. That some of them for me it was just like not interesting at all because it's really broad. There are so many career paths you can take. It's like the the things you study are also really broad, and it's really hard to like dive into more specific fields so for example after i realized i like marketing and and like that kind of thing um i chose to take more of a advertising class something like i think in second year there is introduction to advertising or creative advertising something like that and even that lecture within itself it's only one lecture per week it's not it wasn't like that deep it was more of a history kind of thing rather than hands-on oh i'm gonna teach you like what you need to do to get into the field of advertising i mean it's more of a general this is what our advertising is this is where it came from something like that so if you're going there with an expectation like to have all these skills for the specific career that you want to do like oh i'm gonna like you know after i finish i'm gonna be like an advertiser i'm gonna be a marketer i'm gonna be like this i'm gonna be that not really you are not gonna be because you're gonna like study a bit about the history a bit of what it is something like that write a, write a ton of essays but you're not really gonna gain like advertising skills if that makes sense it's more about analyzing other ads for example uh, analyzing other campaigns something like that it's not really about how to do those campaigns what i really liked about my degree first of all there are no exams and like honestly i do like studying and i do like 
you know, working and doing academic work if I'm interested in the subject. But I just don't think exams like are a true way to like test your knowledge. You know, it's just testing your memory. So it does. You don't really have any exams in at least in Goldsmiths for media and communications. You have a lot of essays, which is like most of your grades come from essays, um, which you know they are very really like there are like ten different essay questions you can choose. Love the most about Goldsmiths is kind of half of your mark is based on the essay and then half of your mark is based on a practical course so on your first year i think you get to choose like maybe four different practical courses just so you get a taste of them maybe it wasn't even four i think it was more maybe six practical courses you do like a taster every i think you have you get two weeks per course and then you just do the courses see what you like and then in the second year you choose you choose two courses to dive more to dive further into and then on your third year you specialize in a course and you do your whole end of year project based on that so the practical courses are like photography illustration um uh, fil tv filming uh, 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 uh journalism creative writing interactive media and I'm forgetting some other ones which I didn't take so my second year I did photography and interactive media for kind of my main practical and then my third year I specialized in interactive media to be honest the photography course was really nice I really enjoyed it they give you like a film camera they teach you how to use it you get to book studios you get to shoot whatever you want not whatever you want you get like a theme a concept shoot what you want you need you learn how to like develop the film in the dark room it's really really interesting like personally i would have chosen to specialize in photography but being realistic i was like i'm just gonna specialize in interactive media because that's gonna be better for my future like i'm sorry but it is what it is hey guys that was the video i don't know how long it's gonna last but i've been filming for almost 40 minutes so there are some cutting and editing i need to do also, I didn't take any editing classes in uni, one of the options was TV and I just had a really bad experience in my TV class and I just didn't pursue it and it's really ironic because now I edit so many videos and I really wish I had like proper training for that but anyway, <laughs> you know, you can always learn on YouTube or learn by yourself which is what I did That's the video, do I recommend Goldsmith? Yeah, I kind of do, it does have a lot of flaws as all unis do, you know, like Sometimes we're like, does this teacher, the teachers are a bit outdated, like especially in the more like modern topics like social media and stuff, you can definitely tell like, you know, they're out, they're outdated. There are some flaws, but I think there, that's ha that happens with everything in life. To me, I had like a quite a positive experience at Goldsmiths. Um, if I were to study at Masters, which, you know, I would really want to, but I don't have the money for that, so. I don't think I'm going to but if I were I don't think I'm gonna study at Goldsmiths just because I've already experienced that and I would want to experience a different uni but if you are thinking of, stu of studying a master's at Goldsmiths like go for it like honestly like um, I know a few people that studied their master's there you know master's is always shorter it's definitely way more specific I do recommend it and I really like the area I just really like the Goldsmiths vibe and I'm kind of proud saying like I graduated from there even though it has its flaws and I always complained about the uni when I was with my friends at lunch but hey at least I met them and I wouldn't be where I am right now if it weren't because I decided to study at Goldsmiths so hey go for it anyway sorry guys if I didn't really mention something that you wanted to hear about or if I were a bit jumbled, I didn't really plan this video through as much as I thought I did. If you still have more questions, leave them down below. Rather than on Instagram, I will definitely answer. And yeah, let me know if there's any other topics like this that you want me to talk about. You want to you share my experience. And yeah, I'm really sweating now because I had to close all the doors because my cat kept trying to get in. So I hope you like this video because I'm sweating a lot. Anyway, see you guys. Bye!